Welcome everyone to SIM English Worship Service. Today is 22nd November 2020. Yes, really, we ask the Lord staying with us in His presence all the time. Today, welcome everyone to this worship and let's share today's prayer. First, pray with church leaders as they offer insight and wisdom to their congregations and communities. Ask God to give them opportunities to be the voices of reason, clarity, and grace. Let's pray for church leaders, whether they near or far, so that they can make a good decision as they welcome new year and they wrap up this coronavirus year 2020 let's pray together Oh Lord, without you, we have no insight, we have no wisdom, we have no guide because you are the life and you are the light. Without you, we only walk in darkness. Lord, you are our wisdom and our life. Without you, we cannot breathe. Lord, we ask your presence with the church members and also church leaders as we pray lord give them opportunities to be voices of reason clarity and grace father god be with church leaders denomination leaders and church synods and all the leaders of the church so they can make a good decision so they can move forward and find navigate their way through this coronavirus torn country and church father god be with us thank you lord okay next let's pray for full dependence on god under all circumstances let's pray for comfort and help of god for all the affected countries and areas the cold wave is coming in as we have seen the heat wave is coming into this globe let's pray for all the countries and areas affected hardly heavily by the natural disasters actually that's our own cause our own price that we should pay let's pray that god will be with us and let's depend on god completely let's pray together Oh, Father God, let us depend on you completely. Father God, you are the comfort and help that we can get. Father God, 
We pray for all the places that have been hit hard and influenced by the disasters and afflictions. Father God, be with them and comfort them. Thank you, Lord. Okay, let's pray once more. Let's pray for all of us to encourage each other in love and care. Let's pray for Sadaemon Church and SIM English Worship and all the faith group and church community that you attend. And also family that you have faith and share. Let's pray for this prayer point. Father God, we we like to encourage each other in love and care. Father God, we pray for Sodemon Church and also SM English Worship. And Father God, we pray that you will be um, with us in these dark and troubled situations. Father God, now we pray for this worship service when we gather in your name. All of our problems, all of our afflictions can wait because you are on the first seat. Father God, we give glory to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I welcome once again everyone to this worship service. Now, let's get into today's message. Today's title is fully experience the perfect love of God is from 1st John chapter 4 verses 15 through 21 so let's read today's scripture God lives in anyone who agrees that Jesus is the Son of God this kind of person remains joined to God so we know that God loves us we depend on it God is love Anyone who leads a life of love is joined to God, and God is joined to them. Suppose love is fulfilled among us, then we can be without fear on the day God judges the world. Love is fulfilled among us when in this world we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love. Instead, perfect love drives, out, drive, drives away fear. That's because Fear has to do with being punished. The one who fears does not have perfect love. We love because he loved us first. Suppose someone claims to love God but hates a brother or sister. Then they are a liar. They don't love their brother or sister whom they have seen. So they can't love God whom they heaven sin. Here is the command God has given us. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. Amen. This is the word of God. Good morning church once again. And as I have medita meditated today's passage, I was deeply moved and challenged because this says, if you don't love your brother and sisters, and you still you say you love God, then you are a liar, liar. In that sense, I am a liar because I always say I love God, I give my love to you, and I cannot say I I love my brother or sisters as much as I love and express my love to God. So. I'm very humbled as I meditate this and I bless and hope everyone can be uh, learned and challenged by the word of God today. If you look at verse 15, it says, 
Jesus is the Son of God. Yes, and it's a very well-known fact. Everyone knows that. But what does that mean? First, as I as we look at today's scripture carefully, then we can find this flow. First, faith comes. We if we have faith, then we can know who God is. What what did God do for us on the cross? And He showed His great love. So through faith, we can understand the love of God. Yes, second step, love of God. If we know the love of God, how did He sacrifice His life for us? And through Jesus Christ, and He sent the Holy Spirit to us so that we can be in God's presence 24 7. Wherever we are, whenever it is, we can be in the love of God. So that's great love. If we know the love of God, we can know the characteristics of love of God, then there's no way that we cannot we can deny God's presence in our life. So if you know the love of God, then God is living in us. God Himself is love, and God is living in us when we realize the true meaning of love of God. And Jesus is the Son of God. What does that mean? If we confess that Jesus is the Son of God, Jesus' Sonship, if you confess that, then what happens? Then we can be united with Christ. Wow, Jesus is the Son of God. God is sent by God. God is the manifestation of the love of God. Then we are united with Christ. Very important uh, message that we can find in the Bible. And also, third fact is God lives in us. What does that mean? God lives in us. God lives inside us. That means God loves us because God love itself. God love. God's love is living in us. God's love is moving us. God's love is speaking through our mouth. That means God lives in us. So we, our breath is not ours. God's breathing us. We live but it's not our life. God lives through us because God loves us. God showed His love and God imprinted, God inscripted His love in our heart. So, what do you choose? What do you choose? What do you choose today? That shows what you love. Yes. What do you choose today to do? What is the order of the least? What is the order of things? And the least that you want to do today, that shows what you love. If you love God, then you choose to do something that related to God. If you look at verse 16, it says, Anyone who leads a life of love. Yes, as I said, if we are living in the life of God, then what? We are joined to God. That's what is mentioned in verse 16. So we can know the love of God. How? Only through Jesus Christ. Because we cannot see the love of God. God is spirit. How can you know? Invisible thing, which is not seen. If we have own eyes, we cannot see. But only through Jesus Christ, we can know everything about God. So always fix fix your eyes upon Jesus Christ. If you're happy, look at Jesus. If you're sad, look at Jesus. If you are uh, depressed, then hold on to Jesus. Whatever that is, happy, joyful, delightful, sad, whatever that is, look at Jesus and think about Jesus then we can know the love of God. So I found that love is a connector, connector. Love connects everything. 
Love connects everything. Look at your life. Something is broken, something is separated, then love is the cure. Love is the medicine. Love is a connector vertically and horizontally. Love is the answer. I mean love from God, not the worldly love. Verse 17, suppose love is fulfilled among us. Love is fulfilled. It's complete among us, not myself, not myself alone, among us as a group, as a community, as a group. Then what happens? It's repeated again because love is fulfilled among us when in this world we are like Jesus. Wow, this is so challenging and um, beyond our understanding, beyond our comprehension because the love of God is completed, is fulfilled among us, between ourselves, in our community. Then what that means in this world, we are like Jesus. Yeah, we became like little Jesus. God is love and Jesus is God. And what does that mean? Jesus is love. Jesus came on earth to show the love of God. And our self, our community, our relationship is filled with the love of God, then that represents the relationship with God and Holy Trinity and Jesus Christ and God our Father. Everything. That explains everything. This verse is so amazing because fulfillment of God's love is Christ likeness in the world. Christ likeness. We are like we, we became Christ like. Not worldly like, but people like, but Christ likeness. That's what it says in this verse. Therefore, what should we do? Live in love. Live in love. I remember one person who is respected when I met him in Dharadun, India. He always finishes his letter living in love and then his name. I was so challenged and I was so moved and deeply moved by that expression, the wording, living in love. I'm living in love. So that's the question. Are you living in love? Yes. Verse 18. There is no fear in love. Instead, perfect love drives away fear. I remember I met one person and uh, that person was troubled with many concerns and worries and fear in the world. What happened? I, I dropped my mobile phone and it broke. When I walk on the street, some, someone dropped something on my head and it, my new clothes became dirty. That person has all kinds of concerns and worries all the time. So I said, remembering this verse, perfect love drives away fear. And then that person is also concerned about the love experience in the world. If I love someone, if I get love, loved by someone that also makes me complicated that's what the, the person answered but this love here is not about the love that we experience in the world that's the love of god shown in jesus christ that's why the every word here love represents jesus christ what kind of fear do you have everyone including me have some kind of fear and afraid of something so what kind of fear do you have? And the question is, is there any part of you not healed properly, completely? Because some part of you is not healed, is not okay yet. So your fear comes in and attack that part com constantly. So did you do spiritual inventory of yourself to understand yourself inside and out? So please check everything about yourself to understand yourself inside and out. Inside means your heart, something is, which is not spoken but inside the space. But out means your words, expressions, and facial expressions, and words and actions and decisions. That's out, inside and out. You need to understand yourself inside and out. Sometimes we cannot understand all, but we trust in the Lord. 
we gaze on Jesus all the time, then it's okay. There could be areas of wounds and hurts in others. Yes, everyone is not perfect. That's why. That's why they act like that and fear is still dominant in them. That way we can understand. Why did he say to me? Why did she act like this? I cannot understand it. I cannot agree with them. Don't say that. Why? Because they have areas of wounds and hurts. And that's why they act like that. They talk like that. Fear is still strong in them. Fear. Therefore, if you find someone with fear and restlessness and helplessness, what should you do? Make sure that person, that person, may experience the love of God through you. Through you. If you met someone that said bad words, bad actions against you, then that's the moment, that's the opportunity from God that you go ahead and show the love of God to him or her. Verse 20. Suppose someone claims to love God but hates a brother or sister, then they are a liar. Yeah. Many of us are liars. So we cannot say, I'm okay, I'm sincere, I'm a good Christian. Don't say that. Because we have always someone, some person, brother or sister, the family members or a brother or sister in faith, as we met in church, church members. We always hate someone. Yeah, we don't like someone. And with some people, we talk and we communicate, we help and we laugh and smile. But other group of people, we don't talk, we don't sit together, we don't eat together, we don't say hello together, we don't do nothing. So we cannot claim we love God. There's always someone. That means whatever happens to you, whether they're a good thing, then don't think yourself I deserve this I earned this I'm I'm good to get this no you are not deserving we are not deserved to live in this life we are not deserved to get the grace of God we are not deserved to be saved even so we should be always humble to say oh Lord I'm a sinner I'm a liar but you are perfect Please live in us. Please breathe in us. Please have mercy on me. I wrote religious activities have nothing to do with loving God. So what are the religious activities we do? Praying, reading Bible, and do all these things. What does that mean? That's one way to express our love to God. Not the other way around. Our, lesson, our relationship with people shows our attitude towards God. How do we communicate with others, other fellow Christians? How do we say, how do we act that represents our attitude towards God, that shows our faith in God? Do you believe in God who is almighty? But you always depend on, depend on yourself, your ideas, your wisdom, not on God. What is unseen? What is unseen? Whether it be about yourself, about other matters or situations, what is unseen, what is not visible, can be shown. Yes, they're always shown through what? What is visible. So we can love God, invisible God, through visible Jesus Christ. We can, lead, we can read the visible Word of God through the Bible. The Word of God is not visible. Yes, always visible your love for god will be definitely revealed always revealed will always shown always appeared how through your loving relationship with others do you have loving relationship with others not only your family members but with everyone else everyone you meet in the church building today's application i i Quote from verse 17, 
as we live in God, our love grows more perfect. Yes, living in God means living in love. And our love grows more perfect because we always live in God and imitate God. As a matter of fact, all we do at church or through church are the traditional ways to live in God, as I told you before. So this verse 17 shows the purpose and direction of our religious activities. Attending church, why? Because we love God. God is living in us, that's why. We sing praises to the Lord. Why? Because God is living in us. Why do we pray? Because we love God. Why do we go out there and show kindness to others? Because we love God. Sometimes our activities or classes at church have no relevance to the motivation that we should reach out and show the love of God. Rather, deplorably, they are designed for people to frequently attending the church. Activities for activity's sake. Educational session should exist for what? For practical application. That's why First John says, if you love someone in words, but if you don't love person in action, then what does that mean? That doesn't mean anything. The question is, is your love growing? Is your love better than yesterday? Is your today's love is better than last year's love? Is your love started in God's love? And is your love rooted, rooted in God's love? What are the actual activities that shows your life in God? Yes. Uh, today's small group questions. Number one, please tell me about your relationship with your siblings. Your sibling, brothers, sisters. What is your relationship? Try to remember bittersweet memories as you were growing up. What kind of memories do you have? Some, some are good, some are bad. But what are they? Please try to remember. Number two, how can you get out there where actual people are desperately waiting for hope and help? How can you get out there, reach out there to show the love of God to show your purpose as light and salt. As you know, we are all, we all are light and salt of the world. Are there any ways to get out of the salt shaker? Do you want to stay in the salt shaker and do nothing? Or in the drawer without any light as a candle? What are your interests? and hobbies think about what is your what are your interests and hobbies what you like generally can lead you to a place of ministry outside of your church think about that and try to find reach out there and get out there to meet people number three educational sessions should exist for practical application is your love growing? Is your love started and rooted in God's love? What are the actual activities that show your love, your life in God? Okay, let's think about this and remember, as we live in God, our love grows more perfect. Let's find out how to reach out. Let's pray together for this. Faithful God, thank you for your guidance as we traverse life's unfamiliar path. Even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, our Lord, 
our Father is the shepherd and guide. In you, we can find out where to turn. Loving God, thank you for your in, infinite patience and forgiveness. Help us to extend the same forgiveness to others that you have extended to us. Bless everyone for this week and let us stay in your love. Let us breathe in your love. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and love our Father God, fellowship and presence of the Holy Spirit be with everyone near and far upon their prayer request, upon people who are suffering in affliction and persecution from now and forever and evermore. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone. This, this wraps up our worship service today. And I pray everyone and bless everyone to have a wonderful and victorious week and living in love. Thank you and see you next week.